Hello everyone and welcome to a surprise video! I know I normally don't upload on Sundays, but I have a very specific topic that I want to cover and I thought this would be uh, or was going to be a good chance to do that. However, before we move on to what we're going to be talking about, which of course you already saw, I just want to remind you that we have our courses going on a sale right now. So uh, the newest course, the stylized character creation for Seabrush is on a sale, 90% discount. Down here, if you go to Udemy, it's available on Skillshare, it's available on ArtStation, but the sale is only in Udemy. So if you want to get it for the lowest price, try to go here to the link in um, in the description. Also, remember, I'm not sure if you all guys saw yesterday's video, but there were some very important announcements about the portfolio review, about the contest, about some new content that we're going to have here in the channel. So if you haven't checked the video, check it. I'm going to try to have like the thumbnail like floating around here. Just pause this video, go check that one because there's important announcements about the next two channel and what we're going to be doing forward. And uh, yeah, so now let's move on to the important bits right here, which is, of course, matching a camera, right? So perspective is uh, this thing that we normally use when we are drawing. And of course, inside of the 3D world, it's very important because if we want things to match a drawing, we need to find what the perspective of an object was. So a very common issue, especially with uh, environment, is that when you're looking for an environment concept piece, you might not be able to match it the exact perspective. Like, let's say I want to do this piece right here, which I think it's already a 3D render. It kind of looks like a 3D render. But let's say we have a, the 2D uh, concept piece, or let's go with this one, for instance. And you really, 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 really want to do this one right here. And you want to make sure that it matches perfectly. How can we find what the actual camera for this thing is? Well, in the old times, I would just go into Photoshop, draw some perspective lines, and try to figure out and match it as close as possible inside of Maya. But nowadays, there's a very, very cool tool that I'm going to share with you. I'm going to show you two ways in which you can use it, if you're a Blender user and if you're a Maya user. So the tool is called FSpy. It's very famous. It's been out there. This is not the first video that's being done about this one, but I'm going to show you how it works and why it is so good. So first of all, you're going to download it from here. And you're going to download, I like to use this like setup here. It's just like the executable. It's very light, very, very light software. And if you're using Blender, you need to go to this uh, add-on thing. And if you go do, 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 down here to the latest version, you're going to download this zip folder and install it the way you install any other plugin. I'll show you this well. But once you have this, if we just open FSpy right here, uh, as you can see, we're getting a prompt, like just either start or load the exemplifier or load a specific image. In my case, I downloaded two images. I'm going to show you how to do this with two different images. The first of them is going to be, where is it? It's going to be a street. So this is a photo from uh, like a street in Mexico. As you can see right here, we had taxes, like a cathedral. I don't even know where this is. I just like look for it inside of uh, inside of Google. So once we have the, the image right here, there's some very important information that you need to uh, take care or, or look at. First of all, we have a specific size, 850 by 550. This is the specific like size of the images. And as you can see, we got this points right here. We got two red points and two green points. This represent the axis that we're going to be looking for when looking for the uh, vanishing points of our image. And in order to get a 3D plane, both axes should match like relatively close. You can see if I, as I start moving these things around, you're going to get something. Now that they're a little bit more aligned, it finds a specific element. So what I can do here is I can like literally just click and drag this right here and try to position this on the corner of this street. If you want to be super precise, you can press a shift and you're going to get this sort of like zoom in tool. And I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to position it like right there on the, actually it's a little bit low. Is it lower or is it higher? It's a little bit higher right there on the white line. Then I'm going to do the same thing for this one. I'm going to go to the corner right here of the house. I'm going to go to the pink corner and then do the same thing with this one all the way over here. Careful with the shadows. We just want to match the house right there. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing, but with the green one, or in this case with the other house. So I'm going to go with this blue line right there. And this one's going to go to the corner there as well. I'm going to try to find like the easiest corner that I can. Like, let's say right there. So as you can see, we now get a grid line, this green lines that we have right here and this red lines showing us what perspective this image has. You can notice that the axis on the little thing here on FSpy is uh, like rotated. So normally inside of Blender, for instance, which I have right here, you can see that the C axis is pointing up, the X axis is pointing forward and the Y axis is pointing to the right. So we do want to make sure that the C axis is pointing up because that will match Blender's uh, space. So on the uh, Y axis, I'm going to change this to Y and negative. 
And as I do that, as you can see now, the C axis is going to be po uh, pointing up and the other axis, it really doesn't matter because at the end we can just like rotate the camera. So this right here is what we're going for. And as you can see over here, it tells us where, like what value should I have, which is like a 53 point something, what a camera position, what camera rotation, all of this information is right here. The difficult way to do this is if you want to match this, you can literally go, for instance, to Maya. And if I create a new camera right here, I can literally start inputting all of those uh, settings, and I will do that shortly. I can input all of the settings into the camera position, and I will find this one. However, I'm gonna show you one path that I think is a little bit easier. But before we do that, if we go to this side over here, uh, we can change the 3D guide and op uh, apply or open this box thing that we have right here. And uh, when I open this box thing, I can actually move this box and see whether or not everything aligns the way it should. What do I mean by this? Well, if I take a look at the corner of the houses, for instance, it should be perfectly straight with the corner of this thing right here. If I move this line down here, you can see it matches the corner on that house right there. I can even move it all the way to the back of the cathedral, and the line of the cathedral should be very, very close to the perspective that we're going for. Same for the ground. Like if I position this close to the sidewalk, it should match the sidewalk right here. I could even move it all the way over here and look at this, this line right here should match the sidewall, which tells me that we have a good match here on the image. So here's where the fun begins. I'm gonna save file, I'm gonna save this, and I'm personally gonna save this in my images folder or my little folder that I created here for this a demo, the perspective video. And I'm gonna save this as a Mexico Street. Camera, or just CM, camera match. Now, if we go to Blender, and we jump here inside of Blender, it's super easy to bring this image and, and start working with the elements here inside of Blender. The only thing I need to do is the following. I'm gonna delete this camera to only have one camera. I'm actually gonna like delete everything, even the cube. There we go. I'm gonna go edit, preferences, and make sure you have your FSpy plugin installed. If you don't have it installed, just click install here, look for it, install it, and that's it. And then if you look this up, FSpy, it should be enabled. As you can see, it's gonna look for the import export um, like command. So if we go file and we go import, all the way down, we're gonna have a new input type, which is the FSpy option. And if we go here, of course, to our um, folder, there we go, assets, and then we go to perspective, perfect. We can just import this and look at this, it's done. The camera has automatically imported the, or this thing has automatically imported the camera, the image as well, and we are ready to work. So what does this mean? Well, if I press shift A and I create, for instance, a cube, you can see that this cube matches the perspective of our scene, okay? So if I move this cube around, I can very easily find where the blocking of the house would be, which would be like around, right around there. I'm gonna go out of the camera, and then I can select, for instance, this face, actually, let me, I'm gonna split vertical here. On this one, I'm gonna go inside the camera, and then on this one, I'm gonna manipulate the box. And very, very easily, I can just select this face, for instance, and extrude it back to start creating the block out of what this little street would be. So you can imagine how like powerful this is. I'm gonna delete these faces, for instance. Let's say I wanna create the sidewalk. So I can grab these two elements right here, E, and extrude them, oh, E and Y to extrude them forward. As you can see, I can match where the sidewalk would be. And it makes sense. You can see the proportion right here actually makes quite a bit of sense. So this is a super, super easy way to do it. Now, I know uh, Blender has other add-ons, but I thought, I, I took a look at them and this is probably the easiest one. And the, one of the things that I like about this add-on is the fact that we can actually um, use this inside of Maya as well. So as you can see, I can just add the corner there, a couple of more vertices and create like the round curvature for the element. We can even go to this guys right here, E and C to push this down into the street, and then E and Y and start building the rest of the of the elements, okay? So this is how we could use this plugin to generate the image inside of Blender. And of course the scale might not be perfectly aligned, but this is just the blocking, right? So once we have the blocking done, once we have most of the elements where they're supposed to be, it's very easy to just scale the whole thing up and get like the proper scale. This is a way to quickly find the perspective and the angles of your camera. Now, inside of Maya, if we wanted to copy the, the camera inside of Maya, again, as I've mentioned, first of all, we will need to find the size of the image, 850 by 550. So on the render settings, I would need to change the render settings here to 850 by 550 and hit okay. 
Then I'm going to load the image plane. So I'm going to look through selected. I'm going to load this image plane. Uh, it's not the project. Let's go to the project real quick. Assets perspective. And we, uh, there we go. It's Calle Benito Juarez in Mazatlan. Mazatlan is a very beautiful place. It's a, it's a beach. Really nice. There we go. So if we get the resolution gate, we have pr pr uh, like properly matched the camera there. However, in order to really match the, the camera's position, I will need to get or copy from SPY all of these elements, the camera position, the camera on X, Y, and Z. We can just copy this. So that's X, copy this. That's Y, copy this. That's C. And then the camera rotation. This is X. This is Y, and this is C, and finally the focal length, which will be like a 54. So we go for like a 54. There we go. So now, technically, if we take a look at this, you can see the camera has like moved. It's not on the ground plane. That's fine because again, we're only looking for the uh, for the position here. And if I create a cube, and again I move it, I should be able to match the cube with the perspective. However, as you can see, we're not really getting the best possible results. So here's where I'm gonna show you what I consider to be the best option. Once you do this inside of Blender, just export the camera, okay? The plugin gives you so many like cool things. Just grab the camera, this one right here, file, export, FBX. Very important that you export in FBX because otherwise it's gonna like flip and you're gonna get a, a weird uh, result. So just export this camera. Let's go to assets perspective. Let's call this camera selected objects only and we export. And then instead of Maya, we just need to go file import. Really need to set my projects. There we go assets perspective and we import the camera. And there we go. The camera should be all the way over here. It's fine. Okay. It's a little bit far away, but that's it's fine. Um, Actually, the scale is a little bit off, but that's fine. And uh, if we go panels, look to selected, and we say uh, image plane. Oh my God, I'm gonna go crazy with this, like not setting things up properly. There we go. So now if we create a cube, we can position the cube where it's supposed to be. There we go. And as you can see now, this is working a lot closer to what we have. We can turn on the resolution gate so that we're only like fitting on the camera as we have right there. Let's grab the back face right there and just push it. And you can see how everything again matches very, very nicely. So the image, if this happens, like you can't see the image, that's a something called the, the clip planes here inside of Maya. You just need to go to the camera options and add one more zero to it. And, um, or maybe even one more on the perspective rather. There we go. There we go. So now we can work with this. And again, it might not fit the ground, but don't worry, you block it in. And then if you want to move it to the center of the floor, you move it to the center of the floor and that's it. So let's very quickly go back to FSPY again. And I'm going to show you another one, but this one is with the concept piece. So this is a concept piece that I got from Angela Person. I actually tried to do this once. This is a 3D model, by the way. So it should match the perspectives. A, a very common issue sometimes is that you try to match a perspective, but it doesn't really match because concept artists make a mistake. They didn't like draw their perspective lines like super properly, or they went for like stylized effect. So it can happen. However, this one is 3D, so we should be able to match it. Even though I normally tell you guys not to do 3D work because it's already been done, uh, I'm gonna show you how this works. So again, here inside of SPY, I'm going to start with my number one. And I need to find that there's no specific letter. There's like a sidewalk or a wall that we can use. So we need to find something like this, like the top part of the of the wall right here and be like, OK, I'm going to I'm going to use uh, this top part of the wall. And then I'm going to use like this wooden. Like this wooden beam is right here, and this is going to give me my number one perspective. And then my number two perspective should go the other way around. Let's use like, for instance, the base of this windows on the back. And then let's use the base of this windows on the back here. There we go. So the floor will probably be really high on this uh, image or, or camera match, but that's fine. Again, once we block everything in, we can just like move it to where we want. We go to our 3D guide and we check our box. 
So if I move this a box right here and I move it like, let's say to the door right there or to the, like this, like a uh, closets and stuff, you can see that all of the lines match really nicely. Like the, the lines over here, the lines over here. And again, if I want to see the information, we can see we have a really low focal length in this case, 16 is really wide uh, a focal length. But this will be the way, my friends, to match any perspective that you want. This little software right here, FSpy, is, believe me, a godsend, especially if you're doing like architectural things and you have like an architect's sketch and you want to find like the perfect solution. Well, this is going to give you a really, really nice start. So let me know what you think in the comments, guys. If you like this, um, then uh, yeah, let me know. Let me also know what other contents you want to see in the channel. Remember that we have the sale going on in Udemy. So down here, you're going to find the 90% discount for the newest course, which is the Character Stylized course. And tomorrow, Monday, we'll see each other again for our live stream. We're going to continue working on the book, like this sort of like stylized uh, Necronomicon or something. Like it's a really, really cool video game asset. I was originally only intending to sculpt it, but a lot of people have been asking me to do the whole workflow. So we'll do it. It's definitely going to take us a little bit more time, but we'll do it. And um, yeah, that's it, guys. Make sure to check yesterday's video for all of the news about the channel. And I'll see you back tomorrow. Have a great one. And um, that's it. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Bye-bye.